Hey everyone, welcome hey, to Ask Julie hey, Anything. I'm here, and, or I can come there. Anyways, okay, just let them come on. Well, we are live. Welcome everyone to Ask Julie Anything tonight. We've been behind the scenes sharing experiences. Julie was just telling us about a cat that she saved that was hit by a car. We've been talking to uh, the, the two crazy cat ladies who are joining us this evening, all the way from Las Vegas. Hi ladies, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having us. This is we're amazing. Excited. We are so excited as well. I, Julie, thanks for being here. We were sharing stories. I was yakking because I'm so excited <laughs> that they're here. We weren't sharing anything. They sat there like this. Like, I was just like, blah, 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 blah. we were absorbing. Wait till we, we have, absorbing. Wait yeah. till, some people are going to have cocktail night and we're going to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. We'll be there. I so this is how things are going to work tonight. I'll moderate questions. Um, most of you know the drill. First things first, let us know if you can hear us in the chat. There's a chat option at the bottom of this, this meeting. Let us know if you can hear us. That'd be great. Oh, nice. Hi, everyone. Hey, Dale, thanks. Dale can hear us loud and clear. Good. Thanks, Marie Marika. Okay, so- Marika! You, you know Marika? Yeah, it's actually Marissa. Yeah, we oh, said Marissa at first. We, we were like, like Marika, hey girl. <laughs> it's Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so everyone can hear us loud and clear. Um, let us and know where are, you're from. People on Facebook can't do anything, though, because we can only see the Zoom people, right? Yeah, they, we can see the Zoom chat, but the people on Facebook, I send them the link and they can come hang out here with us, or we'll okay. get back to your questions tomorrow, or maybe I'll hang out on there after the session for a little bit and, and help you out if I can. So Q&A in the Q&A area, and um, I think to start it off, Maybe the two crazy cat ladies can let us know how you got where you are and, and how this sort of started, this, this crazy cat movement. Ha, crazy cat movement indeed. I love it, I love it. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm Jay. I'm Adrian. And together we are the, the two, two crazy, crazy cat, cat ladies. ladies. And what we, um, we actually started in pet nutrition back in 2005 and um, quickly realized that there was a void when it came to cat parents specifically. So we spent cat 10 resources. years- Cat resources. Or cat resources, yes. There are a lot of cat, cat parents. Health. Yeah, lots of cat <laughs> parents, sorry. Cat health resources. So um, we spent 10 years in the industry learning a lot about dogs and dog health and, and pet food and um, homeopathics and uh, diet and all kinds of things. Um, but when it came to our own cats, because we didn't actually have dogs, all my family did, but we didn't have dogs. So when it came to our own cats, there were no answers when we ran into problems. Yeah. So, um, one of my cats came down with, um, came down with, um, suddenly feline leukemia mm -hmm. and we had no, no idea, idea what to do, what to do or what that was. We thought it was cancer. The vet that we saw actually, uh, recommended chemotherapy. So we were like, total cancer what's going on um and uh but there were no other many, no other um resources really at that time to reach out to and yeah. the survival rate was going to be like maybe 40 percent if you made it through. it was just a very traumatic time and it made us realize that as much as there was out there for dogs we didn't know where to go when it came to our own our, pets. our kitties so right. 2015 yeah 2015 we branched off um and we decided to become that resource that we so long to find. Um, and we started finding a, a lot of resources here and there. They're a little bit quieter and not as loud and, you know, um, everywhere is the dog. As everywhere as the, as the dog, dog health stuff. industry. And so, um, so now we're just huge cat advocates, cat health advocates, cat health junkies, if you will. Yeah. And so, we, uh, we work to bring together the, uh, the cat community and debunk the myth that everybody that loves cats is a crazy cat lady um, <laughs> by owning the owning the title and um, and yeah so we just we we're we're just two girls standing in front of your cats asking them to be healthy it's so cute <laughs> that's so awesome cute. and it's very cool that even though you know cats sometimes seem to go unnoticed people that love their cats love their cats and yeah. we we've had questions during Ask Julie Anything sessions, gosh, since we started doing these, these sessions. And, and people have questions and they have concerns and, and we're so thankful for you joining us tonight. Oh, we're awesome. grateful to be thank here. Thank you, yes, thank you. All about cats. Love it. So All right. I'm not 
Do you want to start with questions and then I I have questions too, but I'll wait till the end. Why don't you, you go ahead, Julie? That's fine. I've okay. got a couple of questions here, but after you. Okay. So I want to know um, about your like about your formulations, how people can get them, where are they, like what are they? What did you, like what did, why did have you chosen the products that you have chosen? Right? Because yeah. because I think I think that's important. Like you know, you walk into a pet, people walk into a pet store, right? And then they're, there's like, they're overwhelmed. I remember when I first opened my clinic, people, you know, talk about supplements and stuff. People thought I was insane. Or if you talked about over vaccination, they thought I flew in on a broom. Whereas now we're right. bombarded with supplements and bombarded with, with information that we don't even know, you know, people don't even know what to do with them anymore. So for people that aren't familiar with your, um, your, your line of products or, or what you do, um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so aside from just being cat health advocates, we, uh, we also offer a full line of um, holistic supplements for, for cats specifically and to help treat and prevent specific ailments. Um, in kitties. Now, how we came to these formulations is um, actually from our prior industry in dog health. Uh, we worked with a holistic animal scientist out of uh, Oklahoma, and he formulated some of their some of their um, products. And so, when we branched off, we we connected with him, and we were like, "Do you have anything that's you know cat specific or more related to cats or that and more really and easier to, to deal with cats? I mean, I think that what we were finding was there were a lot of things that were for pets, right? Like, it's and they're wafers or, yeah, right. They're this or that, but it's very difficult to get cats to, to eat, eat a treat a or, treat or yeah. do, do that. So, uh, yeah, Dr. Campbell is just a, a, an incredible formula. He's been doing it for 40 or 50 40 years now. five years or something. So, um, and turns he, and he works, out. Yeah, he works for, uh, with all animals, but he... Oh out when we came to him he was like oh my goodness nobody's ever come to me for cats I'm a cat rescuer I've rescued over a hundred cats I currently have I think he currently has like 16 cats he um, has a catio he, that would oh yeah it's blow just you incredible. away yeah. um and he he created several um natural remedies to just help the cats that he was rescuing um, from feline leukemia to arthritis to, I, I mean, everything in, betw in, in between urinary, urinary tract, tract infections, infections, all kinds of stuff. And so he had already created a bunch of stuff and he was like, I'd love for you to be able to offer it to the cat community. And that's how we were like, this boing, is, meant to be. This is amazing. And they're all liquid formulas yeah. too. So oh, now does it okay. help get the message out that uh, it's so important for our cats to have a moisture rich diet. Um, yeah. So it's super, it's super easy just to add into the wet into the wet food. Yeah. So it's just very exciting and it's ever growing. We have some exciting stuff in the works right now yeah. and it's just been um, an incredible journey. I mean, our, our motto was to learn, share and grow. And I think it's and, not, yeah, it's not just about the, you know, finding new resources and more information to help our cats. It's very exciting to find um, things that can really help, really impact their health. Well, and that's always growing. Right. Yeah. Like, like we're loot, like, you know, I kind of consider myself fairly knowledgeable in the microbiome area of, of health. I don't know anything compared to what we're learning. You know, we're, it is, it is, it's like another world, right? Like it's, it's, it's a science that you could just study that and nothing else, yeah. you know, because it's it exciting. There's oh, still, so, there's always so much more to learn. So, you know, we never call ourselves cat experts because, you know, we've learned a lot over the past five years, specifically about cats, but we're still learning every day. Yeah. And it's so exciting. We get so excited to learn something new. And it's usually from a follower that asks a question and we're like, down the I rabbit have no hole idea. Go. So we just dive deep into the you but, know, research. But you as, you, I mean, you, you really are a pioneer in, in uh, holistic health in so many ways. It's just incredible to see. And it's refreshing to see someone with your experience. Dr. Margo Roman, same way, right? Like, so mind blown by all this new information that's coming out. And it's so exciting to see that there is no, hey, this is it. This is all you need to know in a box. It's always, it's always growing. And yeah. it's very exciting. Yeah. Because 
the impact that it has on our these little babies, these adored beasts in our lives is just extraordinary. It's just amazing. Yeah. Well, I I think that you know, especially when you think of nature, right? Like my philosophy is when it comes to conventional stuff, conventional stuff lim- I believe limits itself, right? Mm-hmm. Because it looks so compartmentalized, right? right. Like it, it's going in little boxes. Not, I'm not saying it's not needed or whatever, but it's very compartmentalized. When you look at nature, we, we are super ignorant of, of, of nature. Like we think we know stuff, we really don't know anything. Right. Like nature is, is just so all encompassing and every single thing that we look at is 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 it, there's there's no there's no beginning and no end right. Do you know what i mean like it's just it's just this this helps this and this helps that and that helps this and this creates this and that like it's just whereas you know it's 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 so not western thinking or conventional thinking yeah. you know so so when you're in the field of natural medicine or natural whatever um i'll i'll be dead and i'll still not know like an eighth of i don't know i feel like i don't know anything right like i every day i'm like oh i bet you that would happen oh my like it's i'm I'm just constantly it's constant so it's really cool because when people say about retiring i'm like i'm never gonna retire like i don't ooh go yeah I don't want to retire. Like, I just want to keep learning and, and figuring stuff out. So, yeah. So I, I think it's what you said. It's really true. Like you're constantly learning. You're constant. And it's so nice when you can learn from, I mean, you're doing what I did, right? Like if I would have a patient come in and it'd be like, I have no freaking idea what's going on with this thing. And I would get out books and the, the one conventional vet, I just adored him. He was like the smartest conventional vet I think I've ever met in my life. He's just, he was just innately brilliant and so didn't have an ego at all. And he'd be like, Hey, let's take a look at this. And he'd bring out all these books and we'd sit around with, with the clients, like flipping through books and looking at this and, you know, trying to figure it out. And, you know, some people would be like, Oh, like, do they not know what they're doing? You know, they got to look in books, right? And it it just, it's just so cool when you're constantly, like, like you said, a follower will say, I have this problem, or have you heard of this? Yep. That, that just that, that cool energy of trying to help someone else and you diving in and then being able to help hundreds of cats, right? It's so exciting. It's so nice. And it's really it. cool too to see that um, exactly what you said. And I think that's the challenge for a lot of conventional vets is they, you know, they have such a tough schedule, really, right? They're packed yeah. from morning to night. By the time they're done, they don't feel like being like, huh, about that. Maybe I should look at, you know, that time to continue researching and learning and, and growing. Yeah. It, is, it is very much like, well, this is the protocol for this. And this yeah. is the protocol for that. And sometimes that's very limiting and sometimes that can be very frustrating, uh, not just to the veterinarian, but certainly to the pet parent who is going in with like a, a cyclical issue in a way. You know, it's like, I don't know why this keeps yeah. happening. We keep doing the same thing over and over again, gets better for a minute. And then it's, so to be able to really uh, dig in, like you said, grab all the books, like just dive into research and let the dots start connecting themselves to find a new solution for something. It's yep. just so exciting. It is. It is exciting. And I think what else is exciting about it is, is with Facebook or following and things like that. It's um, the more people that, that we touch, the more, the more, I don't, I hate using the word demand, but the more public demand is going to happen right. for alternatives. Right. And um, the, the, I just, I just feel it's, it's, you know, it's really sad because I have a lot of really, really good friends that are, that are veterinarians and, and the suicide rate with veterinarians is massive, eh? Like it's, right. it's a really, really, really big problem. Yeah. And, and I think, I think, um, 
I think it's because, because for that exact reason, right? Like they're not stupid people. They're really, really smart. Yeah. And I think that their workload consumes them, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, they get a bad, they get a bad rap a lot. And I, and I think that, um, I think they need more support to move them into looking at alternatives. And, and I often say, like people say, like, I mean, it's expensive to own a vet clinic, right? Like I own five of them, I know. And, and, and it's really expensive. And I think that, that, um, what they don't have enough confidence in is, is, is charging for their mind and their expertise. Everybody's been taught that you, including people, oh, well, I just went in and spent $200, but I didn't leave with a prescription or I didn't leave with a, um, a, a procedure or I didn't get something done, right? I was just told to change this because it took them an hour to go through the chart and look at something, you know? Like, I think, I think just really trying to educate I have a fly in here. It's loving me and it's like driving me mental. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, so, so saying that, you know, working work like this, this person that you're working with, it's just so nice to hear. Like when he said, Oh my gosh, like I've, I, this is my, one of my passions. Right. And now you guys are facilitating that. I just love the synergy of everybody. Working well, it's, the yeah, ripple effect. I mean, yeah. it's the ripple effect of, uh, we were talking about how cat people are just so empathetic. Pet lovers in general, yes, but yeah. we have found that cat people specifically, since that's where we've been for the last five years specifically, it's just really incredible to see in our, in our small community, just the empathy and support that not only we all have for each other, but certainly for our, our pets. And it's really an exciting thing to see the ripple effect of that, whether it's Dr. Campbell sharing his passion with us and us being able to really just dive in and find out what, you know, go through the product testing and see, see the impact that it has on our babies and have that kind of ripple effect just continue yeah. in, in, in this way. And it's just, you know, and every and time that we need, need a new resource, it just gets bigger and bigger. That's it's, what I was going to say. It's like, it's, it's the same with knowledge. You know, we try to, we, we, we want to share like this kind of thing, like, like we're better together, right? Like we're stronger together. Yeah. Like it, yeah. for, for, and I think that, I think that has to also ripple effect into the more conventional uh, uh, vet, veterinary community as well, where we Medicine, can, yeah. where we can try to bridge that gap because there is a gap, but that, that we, yeah. we have to bridge that gap in some way to where we can all work together. And there's so many, you know, and I think we're coming along. I think we're definitely coming along. Um, oh yeah. But there, yeah, but, but I, but you know, that's one of our goals too, is to, you yeah. know, make, make sure people aren't you know, bridge the gap between the conventional veterinarian um, community and holistic minded pet parents, you know, yeah. so, so that we can. Well, and remind people them. too, that it's, you know, it's our responsibility to have that conversation I, yeah. I, that, you know, it's not just, well, this is a conventional vet. So I, I'm already not going to agree about A, B, and C. This is how I want to do it. It's really such an incredible and empowering and beautiful thing when we can say, Hey, we do disagree on this, but can we try this, right? Just have that yeah. conversation that's gonna impact the health of, of our, our cats and it's going to impact that relationship. Of, yeah, of yeah, everyone. And I also, I also think too the, the, that um, there's such a gray area, right? That are, a lot of people are lost in the gray area yeah. because we have, you know, I'm, let's just talk, Chris fast about vaccines because it's vaccine awareness month and I just went through a big thing with that but where where you know you're considered an anti-vaxxer or you're considered a vaxxer right? right like so you either agree with vaccinations or you don't agree with vaccinations and I'd have to say in the 35,000 animals that I saw in my career more people were in that exploration of right that gray area right so so to not allow people to feel wrong but educate them and allow them to make the choice that feels the best for them right right because ultimately i know for me 
if I don't feel like I've made the right choice for my animal, it kills me. Right. I mean, I'd rather do something super stupid with me, like my my personal body or, or whatever, than I, than, than my, than my animals. We're their only choice. I mean, yeah, we're, we're their best advocate. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is that extra pressure, though, of really trying to make the best, most informed decision for my specific situation and knowing that, that's, that I'm the only one truly qualified to do that. But it's my responsibility to do that extra research, to ask all the questions, to best inform my decision. Because, it, yeah, you're exactly right. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, oop, should've, I should, shouldn't have done this for myself. Like, yeah gone to Taco Bell or something. But if you're, <laughs> you're talking about, sometimes it can be very bad, but also very good. Uh, but when you're talking about making decisions for our, for our cats, yeah. it's like they don't have yeah. any other option other than what we choose for them. It's, I know. It's a they, don't, they really don't have free will, right? right? I mean, they would have if they're wild, but they don't, they don't in captivity, right? So, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, I, I I really think that that gap between vets is is a is a space where you know you you educate people. You got like you guys, you're educating your followers as much as you possibly can, and then taking that to conventional vets and that whole process, like you said, like it's it's about it's not about blame or shame or guilt or whatever. It's about it's a, it's about this is this is this animal is my responsibility you know right. this is what i learned this is what i want to try this is what i'm whatever and i always would say that you know the first thing is to to appreciate them for what they do know right like to make sure that they know that you're appreciating what or you wouldn't have to be there if you knew right. everything they knew you wouldn't actually have to be there Right. So, so it's, it's, it's really that, that balance, you know, yeah. and I'm hardcore. Like, don't get me, I mean, I'm sure, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hardcore with my, with my, with my beliefs and, and, but I also feel like, um, you know, that collaboration, it, yep. it needs to start spreading into, into another field, right? Yeah. So, you know, but we have to start with ourselves. We have to start collaborating with our own group. Right. Yeah. There's this great uh, quote, and I and I think about this when I think about that bridging that gap kind of thing. And I forget who said it, and I hope I don't slaughter it, but basically that belief that <clears throat> we have more in common than we have in conflict. And to use that perspective on the daily, and especially and certainly when it comes to um, seeing our conventional vets, what we have in common is so much more powerful, a right. shared love and passion for pets pet. than anything that we have in conflict. And it's, it should be that commonality that sets the tone for the conversation that best informs Absolutely. us to make the best decisions. 100% rather than, than, than right and wrong and guilt and shame. And like, that's just not a, that's not a, not productive. A, and you know what else it isn't? It isn't what animals do. Right. It's not even, it's not the energy of an animal. It is not the way of the cat. No, <laughs> not, it's not. <laughs> but, and, and that was the other thing, we got to get questions, but that was the other yeah. cool thing that you said was like, you, 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 you find that cat parents are really compassionate and empathetic and, and whatever. And I, I think that people that really love cats are, are, tend to have to be a bit more mindful, right? Like if you're a real cat person, like your dog is, your dog is like really most of them, that's not generalizing, but very much in your face, right? Like it's not, it's not hard to understand what your, your dog's, what's going on with your dog. Right. Um, your cat, it is right. So yeah. you've got to be more, you've got to be more, um, more present, more, uh, you have to have more observation skills. You've got to be more in the moment and seeing subtle changes. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, I think that's a lot of, you know, if someone really loves cats, it's because they love to observe because your power of observation has to be stronger with cats than it does with dogs. 
Yeah, it's that's true. true yeah. yeah, cats are very stoic beings. They're like, hard to read. It, by nature, they they mask their pain, right? Because they yeah. they're they're predators, but they're also prey out in the wild. So it's just their instinctive nature to mask pain. And so it's really difficult to to know. We have to be super proactive as yeah. as cat parents to to be able to catch things before they get really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And and with that, okay. can we do a speed round on questions here? Let's do it. Yes. All righty, here we go. Kat has a question. What do you recommend for a raw fed 13 year old cat that has some issues with hairballs and constipation? Crazy cat ladies, I'll let you start. Raw fed cat, 13 years old, constipation and hairballs? Hair you got it. Okay, so, um, well, we always want to look at the diet first is usually what we say, right? So let's make sure that raw diet is a, a, a good quality diet. We always suggest mixing up, um, you know, variety when it comes to, to diet. So, you know, for, for instance, we, we feed some homemade um, raw and we feed about four different, um, four different pre-made uh, pre raw, raw, raw brands as well. Um, just, and a bunch of different proteins yeah. are all rotated in there too. Right. And so, um, so all that's important. Uh, the moisture in the diet is super important. But when it comes to hairballs and constipation, which you usually go hand in hand because the hairballs can actually cause constipation, um, the regular grooming is super important. Supplemental we, grooming. Yeah. yeah so we want to make sure that we're doing that, especially if it's a long hair cat. We want to make sure we're doing that on a, on a daily basis. And then we found that um, a small amount of coconut oil um, organic coconut oil at, can because we had a boy that had this really thick undercoat and no matter how much we brushed him it was just you know one of those things he was just one of those cats and he would get constipated and get hairballs um, and we found that using a little bit of uh, coconut oil um, and he loved it so it was easy but um, really helped to lubricate um, everything on the innards Helping and help things, you know, kind of pass through too. And so he so. was able, even when he was on a good diet, he was able to really, um, cause he was raw fed. Since yeah. He was well, and we, we watched the, the bone content in the raw diet too, cause the bone content can actually uh, contribute to that as well. But he was on, actually on a, um, on a uh, eggshell calcium. Uh, low raw, phosphorus. Yeah, low phosphorus, um, eggshell calcium diet. But he went from yeah. having issues with constipation and hairballs Constipation probably about once a month. Yeah. And and it was painful. We always watched the litter box. And so knowing when he was kind of stopped up and the hairballs would be like about, I don't know, twice a week. Yeah. And that coconut oil really helped to bring that. We would go months without an issue. At yeah. All. So that but I want to hear what helpful. Julie has to say because, yes. yes. Speed run. Speed run. I want to school us. Well, everything that you said, I agree with a million percent. Um, the bone content is something that we have to be really careful with as they get older, especially if they've got kidney issues, right? Yeah. So I'm glad you said that. I know a lot of um, uh, commercial diets have too much bone or, or sometimes if people are really feeding a lot of chicken necks, you know, to mm. keep their teeth clean, that they, they could, so take a look at, you know, if it's really, really, really dry constipation or is it, is it an impacted constipation? Um, but don't you have enzymes? Did I digestive enzymes, digestive yeah. enzymes are really helpful too for both. Uh, digestive enzymes are really, really, really helpful. Um, really for, the, the plug. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. You're welcome for, for breaking down fur, right? right? Because in the wild, they would be actually ingesting fur, mm -hmm. not just their own fur. So when they have the proper enzymes, they actually, even with their own fur, they can absorb biotin and keratin out of their own fur that then helps their fur and helps their nails and helps their eyes and helps everything if they can ingest some of it, right? Like break it down. Right. So digestive enzymes are really good. For yeah, that. and super helpful for cats because specifically because cats are pretty finicky when it comes to feeding them pancreas. So adding in a supplement um, is always a, a, a lot better for, um, or a lot easier at least for our cats um, than a whole food supplement when it comes to digestive enzymes specifically. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So too much bone, make sure you're not giving too much bone. Um, always check their kidney values. If they're all of a sudden constipation is suddenly an issue because kidney that can be a sign of, of kidney disease, right? The dehydration part. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, right. um, and like, and using a digestive enzyme, brushing them, just like you said, coconut oil, 
all of that is is would be indicated. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Step is yeah. loud. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then I have one too. I because I'm I'm a poop freak. I watch the litter box like crazy, and I do notice what you're talking about. So I'm wondering if you can explain the difference between an impacted com, uh, oh, yeah. constipation and yeah. the very dry stool. And how a cat parent and, would know that. Right, and and then what yep. causes both of those? So impacted would probably look like a bunch of small poops really jammed together. Almost mm -hmm. like, like um, what were those candies called? Tootsie those Roll. Tootsie Rolls, you know, nice. they're like little pieces of poop. They're all squished together when they come out and they're dry and, you know, really, really stuck together. Um, another one are really massive poos. If you're seeing like huge poos, uh, that can be um, uh, something called a megacolon, which cats can get from being constipated, which is when it starts to kaleidoscope onto yeah. each other. That can cause like really bad impactions where they have to go in and be disimpacted. Mm -hmm. um, too much bone often looks whitish. The color is light, right? So they're, it's dry, it's a lighter color, it's not soft, it's almost crumbly, um, really hard, like really, really hard. That's, that's often an indication of too much bone. Can I ask mine now? Yep. Uh, Kim on Facebook and Kat in the chat, they want to know, how much coconut oil are are you are we feeding the cats to help with this process? Go ahead. Okay, so we so we would give Mr. Biddles about um, a fourth to a half of a teaspoon per day, um, and that was it. not every day. I mean, I don't you know we use uh, Cocoa Therapies products, um, and they have you know really great uh, coconut oil, and it's delicious. And it's delicious. Oh, it's, um, it's the best coconut oil. Yeah, yeah, it really, really, it is. really is. Um, so, uh, so I mean, you can. They said we interviewed them not too long ago, and they said you know you can even give more than that, but that was usually about enough for um, for Mr. Biddles at least, and yeah. he was you know average size sixteen year old cat. Awesome, thank you. I just put the Coco Therapy website um, in the chat there: www.cocotherapy.com. Awesome. awesome, and then. Michelle's got a question here. Is it normal for your feline friend to vomit and then go ahead and eat as if nothing happened? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, so vomiting well, is not, vomiting not is not normal. Uh, uh, contrary to popular belief, everybody thinks that just cats throw up. Like it's just, there's right. always a reason behind why a cat vomits, it's, right? It's so not a now as far as like, sometimes it's not that, Big of a deal sometimes it's that they ate too fast or sometimes it's you know sometimes it's a hairball that they have to get up or something like that um and it's not necessarily you have to pick them up and run to the vet however there's always a reason behind why they why they vomit um but if so that's number one though is really trying to figure out what that reason is and i'm curious to know if the question is really that um the cat throws up and then eats the vomit oh is it eats the vomit or eats or just afterwards? goes back to eating as, as far as I can see, it says, then go ahead and eat as if nothing happened. So okay. Go so back to the food. Eating, not eating the vomit, eating the food. Well, and we had one, our, our mama, mama girl, long time ago, she would, uh, she was a scarf and barfer. Mm -hmm. And that was something. And I think, you know, when we were really looking into it, a lot of times when our cats are really hungry, um, A, it's good to remember that cats actually prefer to eat. Are, are solitary eaters. So we didn't really realize that. So we'd put all the food bowls down together and then she'd just go crazy, eat all this food, then throw it right up and then go looking for more food. So um, some, our Zorro loves to eat with his brothers. He won't eat unless he's eating near uh, the big boys. But in general, it's, it's really important for us to understand how cats are just kind of instinctive about how they want to eat. So number one, if it's a scarf and barf issue, try feeding, you know, separating your cats if you have multiple cats and then using some food puzzles to really slow it down. We didn't really know that they made food puzzles back in the day. Anything. So for our mama girl, we went and got a rock and put it in the middle of her bowl so that she had to eat around it and it really slowed it down and it really got rid of that, um, you know, eating a bunch of food really fast and then throwing it up and then going and looking for more food. And another um, home remedy uh, food puzzle that we've heard of 
um, that I think oh. is brilliant is Do a you muffin. Know the muffin man. A muffin pan. But he lives on Drury Lane. <laughs> A muffin pan. Muffin so, pan. so putting the food in small amounts around the muffin pan, so your cat has to eat and then like walk around and then find more, and it's uh, it's like a homemade food puzzle that you yeah. can use. Yeah, smart. That's smart, Julie. Do you want to add anything? Uh, I would say, how often does it happen? I mean, if it's oh, happening yeah. every day, there's something wrong, right? Like it, the cat shouldn't be throwing up every day and then going back to eat. Uh, if my cats throw up, unless it's a fur ball, I, I, I would usually go, oh, what's that about? Like, or, or unless they've gone out and gorged on grass or something and then come mm -hmm. back, come back in and ate. But, you know, um, it's so interesting philosophies about how things should eat, right? Like, yeah. you know, to, for cats to really like gorge too is, is interesting because they're not usually gorgers. Right. right like like in general um but but my philosophy with cats is that every cat should be fed on a on a saucer on a flat bowl right but whisker stress not, yeah, not it, yeah whisker stress yeah. yeah and it's not just stress but some cats i feel like it can it can screw up their equilibrium so they actually get kind of nauseous when they're eating mm -hmm. because it's their sensory perception yeah. as well right so how close they are to things so you think about wearing your glasses or seeing things you know when their face is down and everything's like closed in so I've had cats where like I think I said it depends on what it's if, if they're gorgers and they're eating too fat then that's a completely different situation you've got to somehow slow them down those muffin tin whatever whatever you do it obviously worked so that's the other thing. If you try something and it's working, then awesome. Then it's working. Then you're on the right track. Um, for me, I've had a lot. I used to have a lot of cats come in that used to throw up all the time. And the minute I put them on a flat bowl, they stopped vomiting. Ah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think every cat parent knows that because anytime we've fed, whether it's dry, whether it's wet, whatever it is from a, from an actual bowl and most oh. of the pet bowls, like our cats eat out of yeah. like human like, like salad like, like yes. yeah yeah like, yeah yeah um but but we used to buy cute little pet These bowls tiny and little yeah and they're like tins right and they're like yeah. they're cute because they have a paw at the bottom but you'll every cat parent knows this because they eat the middle and then they leave everything on the side you have to go and scrape it up and put it in the middle again because they don't want to you know they're not like a, a dog true. will lick around the whole thing and, and eat the yeah. whole thing but cats that's yeah. brilliant though yeah i really like I, I like flat plates, especially if it's raw, because it's not sloppy. It's not going everywhere. Or like not flat, but a saucer. Yeah. yeah. A teacup, like from a teacup, right? So it, it's probably like what you just said. Yep. It's not totally flat, but it's it's got a little bit of an edge, but it's wide open. Yeah. Right. It reminds me, Emma Rutherford yeah. uh, uh, over in the UK said she likes to feed her babies on uh, a wooden platter. A wooden platter. Yep. Like just and to let all the smells go. I mean, it's really just so I love it is. It's being considerate, thinking about the the experience of eating from your cat's perspective, knowing yep. that they have two hundred million scent sensors, letting those aromas just kind of breathe a little bit instead of being very concentrated. I just think it's fascinating and that and that really goes hand in hand with that saucer idea too. Yeah. Love for it. sure. And I have cats that want to lie down when they eat. Lay down and eat. <laughs> yeah. Lay down and eat. And when I see them catch things, because they, they're allowed to go out, that's what they do. They catch a mouse, they don't stand up and eat. No. Right. They lie yeah. down and eat it. They hold on to it with their feet and they eat it, right? Wow. So it's, it, it, it is, it's, it's paying attention to their species, what their natural species would be doing in the wild, what their natural inclination would yeah. be how to eat. Love it. You guys are you guys are blowing my mind over here and the attendees too. Dale said, is this whole evening about cats? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, Robin, you might have to help me out in the chat here for this next question. Um, unless the ladies here can understand it. Maybe it's a me problem. Robin's cat, who is 13, is having a dental on Friday. What do I need to look out for? I have heard Covenia is not a good a b to use is that an antibiotic um antibiotic, yeah. it's an antibiotic julie okay and he's 
or he or she is saying, is that true? That's, that's a hard call. I mean, um, because it's injectable, right? So, so that drug, that antibiotic is an injectable antibiotic that you, so that you don't have to give it to them after, right? Um, it's always convenient. It's convenient. It's really convenient, but if they have a negative reaction to it, you can't take it out. Julie, that's, that's what Robin's saying in the chat, and it stays in the yeah. body too long, potentially. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you know, with dentals and cats, a lot of times they'd like to start antibiotics prior to the dental, right? So that you're preventing the bacteria when you're pulling the teeth out from showering on the heart valve, right? So you're, so you're already kind of like a step ahead. Um, but, you know, I, she has to do what her vet, she doesn't have to do, she, she should ask her vet if there's another antibiotic that she could get in liquid form because you don't want to be like opening their mouth and sticking pills down their throats and things like that when they just have a dental surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I never gave, unless it was a really, really bad dental, I often didn't, we didn't even do antibiotics, but um, uh, you know, I'm kind of on board with her. I don't like injecting anything because if you have a reaction, you can't get it out. If I, if I can do it orally with liquid or something, it is super convenient, especially if you have a fractious cat or cat that doesn't want their mouths touched or if their mouths are really painful, you know, then it's, then it's, then it's very convenient to do it. But it's a hard call because I don't know the cat. Yeah. She easily give, give her kitty oral antibiotics um, and she doesn't feel like, you know, she's going to, doesn't have about stitches or <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of, um, extractions and stuff. I would ask her that if, the, if it's possible for her to give liquid oral. Awesome. Bad. Awesome. Julie, cat ladies, do you have anything to add? No, no that was, we just got schooled. Yeah. Thank we you. just learned awesome. that. Awesome. Robin says, uh, thank you so much. And she's got a plan now. Yay. Yay. All right. Michelle wants to know, my cat has a heart murmur. And my vet advises to brush her teeth. What would you do? Who wants to start this one? I'm not, I'm not aware that we shouldn't brush their teeth unless, how old is the cat? Michelle, could you let me know in the chat here real quick how old your cat is? I wouldn't think that, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is, this is a question for you too. So I wouldn't think that, that brushing their teeth would would impact, would impact a heart, heart the heart murmur unless they're like super skittish cat. I think she's saying that she should. I think her vet's saying that she should brush its teeth to help with the heart murmur. Oh, oh. yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. My cat has a heart murmur, and my vet advises to brush her teeth. What yes. would you do? Yes. Oh, I would. I would give it my best shot. Is what yeah. I would do. I think. Um, yeah. It's, it's one of the toughest things. I mean, we've got one, one of our boys is a very fractious kitty and it's very tough to get into his mouth. And, and it's a mouth that we like to look at from time to time because he has an autoimmune disease and, and he'll get ulcers. Um, but also recognize, oh my God. Who's that? Who is this? Oh my this? goodness. Yeah, hi, Aggie. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> hi, babe. You're just a bundle of cuddle, aren't you? Wow. Oh. He's a big boy. <laughs> he is. He, he reminds me of Pooh Bear, who she's talking about. Yeah, how much does he weigh? 20 pounds. Yeah. We got Pooh Bear at 19 right now. We're trying to get him back down to around the 16, 17 mark. Me too. Me too. Oh, my God. But yeah, brushing the teeth is, is yeah. really... I've never... I've actually never heard... a that, big challenge. I've never heard that brushing teeth helps with heart murmurs. Does it? Well, what happens is that when they have dental disease, the bacteria from their teeth sh can shower on the heart valve oh. and create, create problems with the heart. So if they already have a heart problem, a prevention is to try to keep the teeth as clean as they possibly can um, in order to keep the, the, the valve as healthy as long as possible, right? Do you um, have, so would you, would you su suggest raw meaty bones then? Oh my gosh, I would be suggesting chicken necks, 
um, putting a probiotic in their water, right? So that when they're drinking, the probiotic is also incredible for, for tooth decay. Um, it, it really, really helps with bacteria in the mouth. And yeah, raw meaty bones, bones, um, you know, if it's not on raw, definitely on raw, just to change the acidity in their mouth. You would try those options before the actual trying Brushing to get a kitty toothbrush in there. I don't, I never recommended toothbrushes. I have so much cut hair in my mouth now, I can't. <laughs> he is so happy, just snuggle, snuggle boating with you. Oh Look at goodness. him. What's his uh, name? Hagrid. Hagrid. After Harry Potter, the big massive, the big massive giant. Oh my God. He was the one, he was, he, uh, he almost killed his mama when he was born. Oh goodness. He's as okay. big as his head. <laughs> like she's this tiny, she's one, she's the one that was hit by a car. Oh my God, this wow. is one of her babies? <laughs> so many days, but I always, I like, I like just wrapping, I like finger, finger yeah, toothbrush, yeah. like do. much, much better than, than, than toothbrushes. Um, and when you do use, if you, if you want to try brushing their teeth, you can take, you can also use like a probiotic on the two, instead of toothpaste, oh, yeah. use a probiotic. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want the recipe for that, um, you can email me, Steph at adoredbeast.com, and I can send you the infographic that's the, the probiotic dental taste recipe. Yeah. Yes, yes please. please. You have our address. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, that's exciting. Julie, this one might be for you. Joanne says uh, her friend's, okay, bear with me. Her friend's diabetic cat has, he's lethargic, um, his glucose level is down. She's concerned about the cat. Um, she's asking for a homeopathy re remedy. Can the cat take ca carbo veg to help drop the glucose? Maybe he's uh, having some kind of episode, diabetic episode. You know what? She should contact Andrea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, it's, there's lots of different remedies for that, but you have to have the whole picture, right? Excellent. Thank you so much. Beth okay. here has a question. We have a six-year-old female cat and our vet told us her gum is growing over the tooth near the back. We're afraid to put her on, under anesthesia as she has been spayed already. If her tooth doesn't seem to bother her, should we wait? We want to do the right thing for her. Now, the crazy cat ladies, you were talking a little bit about how stoic our cats are and, and how they hide their pain. How would you go about taking care of this girl? I would definitely be watching the eating habits. I think that a lot of times we'll, we're not going to notice anything's wrong, but little subtle changes in how they eat, like even shaking of their head or um, how much they're eating uh, can I, be an indicator. Yeah, I also wouldn't, I mean, personally, I don't know the whole story, but um, at, at six years old, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fear putting the cat under to for a, for oral surgery. We, in fact, our our cat was eighteen if, years old. If it was necessary, I mean, yeah, I mean, a if it's cat wrong. under, at, all, always has a risk to it. Well, for sure, but yeah, but um, our cat was eighteen years old. He was raw fed. He was very healthy. He had taken supplements for you know several several years. Um, he had a good, strong immune system, and but no vet would. He ha he also had a dental issue, and we needed to get the problem taken out. Oh, it was awful. And none of the vets would. Four different vets. Four different would vets not. would not put him under because of his age. And um, oh my goodness! And so, um, so we finally found a, one of the vets that we use now, and she was like, "He's strong. His heart is strong. His immune system is strong. He's a healthy cat. I don't. I'm not worried about putting him under." And he lived to almost 22 um, because we were able to get, and he was no longer in pain. He wasn't like at his so, mouth. Right. So we could tell though there was an obvious issue that was causing discomfort. And I, and I hate, you know, even trying to, it's awful when you, when you realize that there is a, a, a an issue. I could tell by the way that he was eating and, and all of that. Um, I'm not sure, Julie, what is your opinion on the, the doing something selectively like that in a way 
Well, first of all, it's not normal. So what, not that it doesn't have to be addressed, but he, first thing she should figure out is why is it, why is it happening? Is it, is it, is the, is the, is the gum growing over because it's having something called the reabsorption? Is the gum growing over because the cat's starting to create um, an autoimmune disease where they actually become allergic to their own plaque? Because putting them under without knowing why that's happening is probably not ideal because what you want to do is you want to um, know why it's happening so that you can prevent it from happening from the rest because you don't want to every year have to be oh okay we fixed that one now it's got this one oh we fixed that one now it's got this one oh now we've got like now it's whole mouth is like that yeah. so you really want to find out what it is why it's happening and start a preventative approach before um i would say before before a um, addressing anything surgically so you can be sure it's it's not going to happen with the rest of the teeth right so the other thing with teeth for me I definitely definitely I'm not saying I, I mean dentals are really important because cats can be in a lot of pain and they can have really bad teeth and it can really affect their quality of life and it can stress them out and cause all kinds of other problems but I love dental surgeons. Like I love fortified dental surgeons, especially for cats, because it's all they do all day long. And they're like, if, if you have an older cat or you have a cat that you're concerned about anesthetic, they're usually in and out way, way faster than taking them to a, a to a, just to, to a general practitioner, practitioner vet. That's so all of our, de all of our dentals, when we had, I referred everything out to dental surgeons because most of the time, just because I think it's just so much faster or if, if there's, you know, to get a specific diagnosis on something in the mouth so that you can actually be proactive after surgery, yeah. you know, so that you don't have to keep going back and having it done. Yeah. So would this you know, be a good see... second opinion situation? To... Yeah, I would, I would probably go and and ask if, if the vet isn't a hundred percent sure why it's happening and what it's called so that you can make sure that the rest of the teeth don't, that doesn't happen to the rest of the teeth. I would, I would go see a dental specialist to be sure you know why that's happening. So they yeah. prevent it. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I can't tell you how many uh, cases that we've had of, that um, have called us that their cats have a stomatitis and their vet has recommended a full extraction and then they, the practitioner does a full extraction, but doesn't get to those roots, doesn't take away the problem. And now the cat is left toothless and still with stomatitis yeah. and pain. I know. It happens all the time. Yeah. All the time. It's, it's um, and you know, sometimes it's immune mediated. Sometimes it's, it's um, you know, like, a, like a, a particular disease where they become reactive to their, to their plaque. And that's in that case, if they don't get everything out, it's the, still the same protein that they're allergic to. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't help. It's, it's, it's terrible, but it can all be, you know, all of it can be addressed. Like 99% of it can be, can be addressed. Yeah. So Especially with the specialist. Yeah. yeah. Specialist and working, but not just, not in a million years am I saying, just take your cat to a dental specialist because then they'll get a whole bunch of dentals done and they won't have the tools in their toolbox to prevent it from happening again if it's autoimmune or if it's you know do you know what i'm saying they, do, they don't have anything in their toolbox like you know raw food diets and changing the changing the ph in the mouth and do it they don't have that in their toolbox they have the ability to go in and do surgery super duper fast and and with less complications but they don't like it's all I always blend the two together right a holistic bed or a holistic practitioner along with a specialist awesome i've got two more questions uh one of them's one of them's super important from facebook 
but I'll save that one for last. Uh, Pet Chat Mary is asking if you have any recommendation to help an 11 year old Siamese mix with asthma who won't eat raw but will eat home cooked or high quality canned and barely eats dry. Um, and, then, and then she's asking homeopathics, food therapy, Chinese herbs, how can we, how can we help? Yeah, asthma is one of those really difficult ones. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. From what we see is we want to address the, we want to address the triggers, right? When it comes to asthma. And a lot of times, um, uh, at least from our experience, that is either stress induced or it is um, environmental, environmental toxins, right? So um, one of the like uh, uh, fragrance, like um, home fragrances, aerosol spray, plugins, candles, you know, all of these things that basically- Floor cleaners, I mean, yeah, it's really floor incredible. Floor cleaners, um, but chemical, just chemicals in your home basically um, have- Scented litters. Yeah, scented litters. Like all of this stuff can be triggers for asthma. And sometimes we've seen cases where they literally just clean up their house and there's no longer any asthma attacks. Um, so, so I think like from a bigger perspective, we want to look at all of that. And then if it's stress induced, you know, we might want to look at confidence building sessions and, you know, different, different things that we can do at home, more vertical space, um, calming, natural calming solutions. There's a lot of those um, that we can, you know, to help to, you know, keep our cats, keep good job. yeah, keep our cats calmer, build their confidence um, so that, so that they're not enrich their environment and yeah. detoxify at the same time. Yeah, enrich and detoxify. Yeah. 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 Would Julie, you, do you have anything to add? I love treating asthma with cats. <laughs> I've had really what? success with asthma. With, with really? Cool. Let's go. Let's more. talk. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a, their environment is massive. So the piece that you just said is a large piece of a protocol that, that we would make sure happened. Um, but there are really incredible, incredible homeopathic remedies that can help with asthma, like Kelly Bick and Arsenicum. And like, like I, my favorite person to work with is, is well, you can, you can work with any um, homeopathic veterinarian or homeopathic animal practitioner. Um, Andrea Ring is, is to me one of the, one of the best, uh, but so to get them on a really good homeopathic remedy, because what that'll do too, is it, it looks at the specific physiological process of like, because all asthmas are different. Some are worse in the morning, some are worse after they eat, some are worse when they're sleeping, some are worth it, worse in certain times of the year, some are coughing asthma, some are you know, they, they don't cough, they just can't breathe. There, there's a, there's a loads of different um, symptomatology that goes with it get, that can be targeted with specific homeopathics, right? But um, we make a product called Gut Soothe and we actually have feline Gut Soothe. And it works like a hot darn in asthma because it's got an acetylglucosamine in it. So what N-acetylglucosamine is, is like glucosamine for the joint, only it's for smooth muscle. So bladder wall, lung wall, oh, wow. mucous membranes, um, intestinal walls. I did a study on horses. I have a bunch of rescue horses here. And I have three COPD horses, which are called heaves with horses, that were going to go for meat because they couldn't breathe. Like they couldn't even hardly get off the trailer when I rescued them. Oh. I don't have them on anything but that. Wow. And they're, and, they're, and they're amazing. Yeah, we've we've been able to take cats on that are on inhalers, off inhalers. Like yeah, oh, this, is this is exciting. This is huge, yeah. this is huge. Yeah. yeah, okay, so what is it called again? So ours is called Feline Gut Soothe. So it's for the gut. So it's for, it's, it's for inflammatory bowel disease, right, IBDs all that kind of stuff, like pukey cats, lots of GI stuff, but it works incredible for their lungs, for asthma. It's a really, 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 oh, really good piece. Fine. It's got slippery elm, and it's got, you know, it's got slippery elm, it's got marshmallow root, it has all the soothing <laughs> herbs. But the N-acetylglucosamine, along with that and the L-glutamine, it just takes, 
it just takes the, um, the inflammation out of smooth muscle. It specifically targets smooth muscle, which is what the interstitial oh, lining of the lung. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. So Look for an uptake really in sales for that yeah. product. <laughs> yeah. oh, it works. It works like, you know, you can go and you can buy all those products individually, right? You could go buy an acetylglucosamine and you can buy Cipriam and you can do all of that stuff. Um, but again, it's getting them to eat it. Yeah. So we've tried to formulate it. We don't, we aren't having like, we, they, they really like it. So I, I, my two cats are so, well, I have two cats that are really picky and they'll eat it. So um, that would be something for asthma for sure. And making sure their diet's good, right? Like, you know, that they're not, they're not eating a lot of grains or a lot of things that, that increase their histamine response. Right. Right. Making sure that their histamine levels are, are the, like no sugars, no, nothing that's going to stimulate. Making sure their liver is clean. You know, I looked at some products that, that you guys had. What's that kit thing? Which one? Which kit? The, the, the hyperesthesia kit? No. The well, wellness Feel kit? Feel yeah. Kit? The what? Wellness kit? Tell me some of you. Okay, we have time. Tell me some of your kits. Yeah, well, so we, well, we, have a, we have a few kits. So what we've done is over just learning um, as we go, we've learned that, you know, specific products, could be put together and work better for a specific ailment. So we put, we just put those products together and call it a kit. So people know what they're looking for. Right. Okay. So, um, so we have like the catastic wellness kit, which is probably what I, I was trying to think of the name yeah. of it. Okay, catastic. Yeah. So we, we call it the catastic wellness kit, but it's basically, it's good for, you know, just overall everything. It's not necessarily specifically set aside, which is why we call it the wellness kit because it's not set aside for a specific ailment like most right. of the others are. Um, but it, um, it's a mixture of the catalyst, which is a, um, it, it's a mixture of digestive and antioxidant enzymes. So like superoxide dismutase, catalase, like, and then the amylase and protease and lipase and to, to, to help aid in and uh, digestion, but yeah. also help to really reduce inflammation in the body. And yeah. uh, catalyst so is like- Stop there. The reason I'm saying this is because when you were dealing with asthma, that whole entirety has to be put into place. So first thing you can do is put them on something like that kit, right? Like, because yeah. you want to make sure that they're breaking down their food because a lot of cats don't digest their food properly because they don't have the proper enzymes, even in raw, because we're not feeding, feeding the, the, the bits, right? right? We're not feeding the organs and the brains and the pituitary and the thymus and all that, that stuff. Okay, go on. Next. Oh, and then the other product is, is our OxyCat, which, um, which we do recommend for, um, for cats with asthma or any kind of respiratory problems. Um, it's an, it's a antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial, um, um, oxygen, basically it helps the, it helps the, um, the, uh, spread of oxygen in the body or the yeah. flow of oxygen in the body, um, yeah. if you will, um, a, along with a lot of other things like fighting, uh, respiratory yeah. viruses. Yeah. Well, because that can happen, right? So when they have asthma and they're and they're, they're not getting enough air and there's a lot of mucus in the lungs, they can get secondary Infection. secondary bacterial infections, right? Yeah. So so but I know you have a digestive enzyme, that's why I was saying, or that I that was the the thing that I was watching was the the oxygen and the 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 information that you just gave us. So if you have a cat with a bunch of people with asthma or a bunch of cats with asthma that you have followers, that's really important. And all of that can go with gut soup. So there's nothing contraindicated. There's nothing that's going to be. And then they can also, if they're really worried about these cats, then they can get a hold of Andrea. And Andrea does distance calls. For, for specific for their case. Yeah. Perfect. For just we should, for we should talk about putting the... We should talk about putting together an asthma kit then with the, with the, the products. Really, really, because a lot of kitties suffer from asthma. Yeah. It's really bad. And a lot of them get misdiagnosed that they have fur balls for the longest time. And it's right. not actually fur balls. It winds up, it is asthma. Yeah. And so a lot of people, they, they're like, well, my cat's constantly coughing. And the vet keeps saying that it's fur balls and it sounds like fur balls because they're like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's really actually, it's asthma. And then by then they have a lot of um, 
uh, thickening of 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 mm -hmm. the lungs, so they're 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 the amount of air that they're getting is is limited. But N-acetylglucosamine can do to do some really amazing. I love that. I love all the day, every day. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So we can, yeah, for sure, we should collaborate uh, on that. Stay tuned. Babies that can't breathe. Stay tuned for a fall collab. <laughs> I love it. I've uh, so I know we're over time, uh, ladies. But can we? Can I ask one more super important question? It's from someone on Facebook here. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, his name is Rodney Habib, and his question is either for the crazy cat ladies. We'll start with you. Um, who would you trust more babysitting your cats for a few weeks if you went on vacation? Rodney Habib or Dr. Karen Becker? Don't do that. Don't do that. You can't do that. That's not fair. Oh, that's not fair. But I'd have yeah. to say Karen just because. I was going to say, I, it's not even a question. Yeah, she's got, she's she's got, got cats. You don't have cats and currently, cat. Rodney. So. Rodney wouldn't even know what to do with the cat. I would. <laughs> <laughs> so the jury's I'm out. Rodney, well, I mean, you would take care of any lovely animal on the planet. I'm sure you would. But when it, yeah, when you sure. see Karen doing tricks with her kitties, training her cats with treats, yeah, uh, I would, I would, I would have to. I but could Rodney yeah, come know, over Rodney, and do like a play date with the with the cats? Yeah, now that like, would be Karen, fun. A Karen play is, date. is responsible, you know, for for cat sitting, but maybe, you know, as an extra enrichment to the the absence of their owners being there, maybe Rodney could come over every day but, with a little play date. But you know, you know my, you know my, like, book of, like, I, I don't think, I think Rodney would be a bit too nervous after he read my book of instructions of what you have to do to take care of my cats while right. they're away. But that's why Karen would, would take like, care of them, but he could right. come over and just play. <laughs> You're both invited. Come over yeah, anytime. bring it. Awesome. I think Rodney should forget about taking care of the cats and come and, and come and take care of my 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 duck or my goose. <laughs> Ask Rodney if he wants to do that. <laughs> yes, and and then video the whole and thing. And please take lots of video. Yeah, yeah. Rodney's, That's scared. Awesome. Rodney's scared of my duck. No, he's not. <laughs> In all fairness, it, it it chased him. So, so there's <laughs> a reason. Came out of love and attraction, or chasing him. <laughs> He's a I, very good looking man. I, if I were a doctor, I actually, think, I actually think that was the reason why. <laughs> That's awesome. He has hey. no comment. He has no comment. Oh, oh, I don't know. He probably does. I'll, I'll go. I'll go hop over there shortly after the event. Okay. Um, we're running over time, but hey, thank you so much for an awesome session. That was incredible. Uh -huh. Super informative. We loved having you ladies on here, Julie. Thank you for for hanging out as well. It's yes. been like, thank you guys so much. I was oh, so excited. Like, I I remember being at um, I think it was Super Zoo. Yeah. And and I was like, who are these people? The crazy cat ladies. <laughs> and I, I can't wait <laughs> to meet little old ladies. Pardon? No, I didn't think you were old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you went to our name. You picture us in robes, smoking a cigarette, <laughs> holding hats in every pocket. <laughs> No, we're switching it up. We're switching it up. This is yeah. really this is such an incredible night. We we can't thank you enough. We've been so excited slash nervous uh, slash yeah, just yeah. very excited to be a part of this. So thank you. Yeah, thank you it so was much. Fun. It was fun. Thank you so much. And we'll have to have to do more to see what we can do to help the that sector of our of our animal family that doesn't get enough attention. Which love I'm, it. Yes. A fall collab indeed. Mm -hmm. Steph will write it down. You got it. Thanks everyone for joining right. us tonight. See, See you, you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.